Wondering what El Chapo is doing now? Well, this man was renowned for outsmarting prison guards twice over, and he is now confined for eternity within the confines of Colorado's ultra-secure Supermax prison. We would say it's the closest thing to hell on earth where every moment is torture. Hold on, cause you won't believe the last part. El Chapo, the notorious drug lord, finds himself in a world of inhuman conditions in the United States' toughest prison. From headaches plaguing him every day to being deprived of sunlight and fresh air is just something straight out of a nightmare. Now, amidst all the suffering, there's a hidden layer of conspiracy surrounding the secret of administrative measures he's forced to follow. But before we delve into that, let's rewind a bit and understand why El Chapo is facing this. You see, back in the 90s, El Chapo was the big cheese of the drug world right up there with Pablo Escobar. His cartel empire in Mexico was pulling in billions annually and his escapades were the stuff of legend. We mean, the guy managed not one, but two mind-blowing prison breaks. The first one, back in 2001, was like a Hollywood heist with guards in on the action and El Chapo rolling out in a laundry cart. Then, just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, he pulled off another escape in 2015, this time through a mile-long tunnel. The climax of El Chapo's story came on January 8, 2016 when Mexican authorities raided his hideout in Florence. This wasn't just any raid, it was a full-on military operation with 17 marines storming the place. The residents had been under surveillance for over a month and when locals reported suspicious activity, the authorities knew they were onto something big. But here's the thing, before they could even burst through the reinforced steel door, El Chapo had vanished into thin air through a secret tunnel, emerging more than a kilometer away, but his escape was short-lived. He surfaced again, hijacking a civilian car at gunpoint. The authorities were hot on his trail, and they finally nabbed him about 20 kilometers south of Los Mokis. And in true El Chapo fashion, he tried one last desperate move, offering bribes to the officers. But it was too little, too late. He was extradited to the US, where his worst nightmares became a reality. Facing multiple charges and indictments across the country, he was sentenced to a life sentence in prison plus 30 years. And let us tell you guys, life behind bars for El Chapo ain't that easy. It's 23 to 24 hours a day locked up in an underground concrete pit with just one precious hour of freedom. Now that's a tough sentence. Now let's look into the dark secrets of ADX Florence, the notorious home to some of the most ruthless criminals of our time. These guys, they're straight up monsters with no interest in money or power, just a sick desire to see people suffer. So, why was El Chapo sent to this living nightmare? Well, let's rewind to 1983, when Thomas Silverstein and Clayton Fountain, who were members of the Aryan Brotherhood, committed a heinous act, fatally stabbing correctional officers. That incident shook the system to its core, leading to the creation of ADX, a place designed to contain those deemed too dangerous for regular prisons. And let us tell you, ADX is no ordinary prison. Situated on a 37-acre complex in Florence, Colorado, it's like something out of a dystopian nightmare. Imagine spending 23 hours a day locked up in a single cell with just one hour of freedom in a slightly larger area. And when we say freedom, we mean you're still shackled and monitored every step of the way. But wait, it gets worse. Meals are delivered by correctional officers and carefully inspected to ensure they can be used as weapons. And as for the accommodations, concrete everything. From the bed to the desk to the toilet, and don't even think about trying to escape. Motion detectors, cameras, and remote-controlled steel doors make it nearly impossible. Plus, there are armed guards, razor-wired fences, and gun towers surrounding the perimeter. The inmates are classified into six different security levels. El Chapo finds himself in cell block H, constantly under surveillance and subjected to relentless harassment from officers. His family's not allowed to visit and sleep? Forget about it. But believe it or not, there's a place even scarier than where El Chapo's held. Range 13. That's where they keep the true monsters, like Ramzat Yosef, the mastermind behind the 93 World Trade Center bombing, and Thomas Silverstein, the brains behind ADX itself. Now, as terrifying as El Chapo's crimes may be, some argue they don't hold a candle to the sheer brutality of these inmates. And while there's no way El Chapo's escaping this fortress, there might just be a tiny glimmer of hope for him to reclaim his freedom. Despite multiple failed attempts to overturn his conviction, El Chapo's legal team isn't giving up. Their latest scheme, banking on his impeccable behavior, will earn him a ticket out of ADX. You see, there are units within the facility where inmates can roam freely, socialize, and maybe even hash an escape plan. But here's the catch. Only the best behaved inmates get access to these privileges. So if El Chapo can keep his nose clean, there's a chance that he could earn a transfer to a less secure facility. And we all know what that means, another shot at a daring escape. 
But wait, there's more. The legal team isn't stopping there. They're also exploring loopholes related to mental health issues within ADX, pointing to the numerous murders that have occurred due to mental breakdowns. If they can leverage these criticisms effectively, who knows? El Chapo might just find himself walking out of those concrete walls sooner than anyone expected. It's chilling to think about, but even within the confines of ADX Florence, where the most notorious criminals are held, violence still rears its ugly head. Take April 21st, 2005 for example. Two inmates, Sylvester Rivera and Richard Santiago, were captured on tape mercilessly beating and stomping on a high-profile Mexican mafioso, Manuel Torres, to death. It's more of a reminder that even behind bars, you're not that safe from dangers. Despite such heinous acts, these perpetrators weren't sent to death row as one might expect. Instead, they remained incarcerated at ADX. But violence isn't the only specter haunting these walls. Tragically, eight suicides have occurred within these confines, a grim indication of the harshness of the conditions inside. Sure, these individuals may have committed crimes, but they're still human beings deserving of basic dignity. The struggle against the Federal Bureau of Prisons' alleged mishandling of mental illness among inmates escalated when inmates filed a federal class action lawsuit. This legal battle shed light on chronic abuse and the failure to properly diagnose prisoners suffering from mental health issues. Such actions highlight the ongoing challenges within the prison system to address the well-being of those in custody. Meanwhile, Julian Assange the founder of WikiLeaks faced extradition to the United States. However, a British magistrate initially refused the extradition, citing concerns about the conditions Assange might face, particularly solitary confinement and special administrative measures at ADX Florence. Eventually, an agreement was reached to extradite him under conditions that would not subject him to such measures or imprisonment at ADX. As for El Chapo, his prospects for transfer to a lesser prison hinge on demonstrating impeccable behavior, a daunting task given his history. Yet, given the operations continued by the Sinaloa cartel, which remains a dominant force in the drug trade, it's clear that his absence hasn't diminished its influence. The cartel's sprawling network spans drug trafficking, controlling seaports, managing smuggling tunnels, and orchestrating criminal activities like extortion and kidnapping. Despite internal factionalism after El Chapo's arrest, the cartel remains a formidable player, with El Mencho's Jalisco New Generation Cartel emerging as a potential rival. El Chapo's story, despite his incarceration, continues to cast a long shadow. The narrative surrounding him paints him as a charismatic figure, a modern-day Robin Hood who defied the odds to rise from poverty to billionaire status. While acknowledging his criminal activities, many still view him as a symbol of rebellion against authority, someone who dared to live life on his terms. In contrast, his rival El Mencho and the Jalisco New Generation Cartel are depicted as ruthless villains perpetrating violence and terror across Mexico. This shift in focus towards El Mencho and the CJNG could potentially provide an opportunity for El Chapo's defense team to exploit, redirecting attention away from his crimes. However, despite the political maneuvering and attempts to portray him sympathetically, the reality remains that El Chapo served a life sentence in a high-security prison. His days are now spent in relative isolation, watching television and corresponding with his limited family members. Despite some appeals for his return to Mexico on humanitarian grounds, the likelihood of his release or transfer remains slim. El Chapo's story continues to captivate, but whether it ends in redemption or further tragedy remains uncertain. Anyways, whether he finds redemption or remains confined to the walls of his prison cell, one thing is certain, his story is still widely known. So, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that post notification bell. Until next time, stay awesome, and we will be back with another one.